We're going to take another look at the special assignment statement that we had called the accumulator pattern. And in particular, we're going to look at how that accumulator pattern can be used in conjunction with an iteration to provide some very nice processing. So let's just remember for a second what we're talking about. A statement such as sum equal sum plus one looks strange to us at first until we realize that this assignment statement says evaluate the right hand side that is take the current value of sum add one to it and then let sum refer to that new data object so for example if sum was currently a reference to the data object 12 and we perform this assignment statement 12 plus 1 creates the data object 13 and then step 2 sum is made to refer and so sum no longer refers to 12 but rather now refers to the data object 13 and so it's a way to modify the value of a variable and in this case remember the new value which is going to be one greater than the old the question now becomes what happens when we put this accumulator pattern assignment statement together with some iteration. Well, let's go ahead and build some statements. So let's start off with this variable sum and let's just initialize it to zero. So the first iteration that I'm going to build is just going to be a very simple definite iteration that's going to do something ten times. And we'll just use the simple range ten to create that sequence object. So now we know that whatever statements we put inside of this for construct, those are going to be done ten times. So for this example, let's simply put our accumulator pattern assignment statement. Sum is a reference to the value sum plus one. Now, if we're going to perform this statement ten times, think about what's going to happen. If sum is zero, zero plus one is one, and now sum will be referring to one. Second time through, sum is 1, add 1 will get 2, now sum will be referring to 2. Third time through, sum will be 2, add 1 will get 3, now sum will refer to 3. And if we do that 10 times, as you would imagine, the value of sum will become 10. We added 1 to the value of sum 10 times, and because sum started out at 0, we end up with a result of 10. Now, we can actually make a modification to this and do something slightly different. Let's reinitialize sum back to zero again. And this time, I'm going to write the for statement. Instead of using a counter, I'm going to go through the items in the sequence object. So let's have our range start at one and go up to, but not include 11. So this range is still going to go 10 times, but it's going to go from one to 10. And what we'll do is write the same type of statement, but now instead of adding 1, I'm going to add the item itself to the sum. So now think about what's going to happen. If we look at that range object, we're going to have 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and finally 10. As the iteration works through the values of that range object, what that statement does is it says take each of those items and add to the old value of sum and let that be the new sum. So when sum is 0, we're going to add the first item, which is 1, and now sum will be 1. The second time through, when item is 2, sum is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, so the new sum will be 3. The next time through, sum is 3, the item is 3, add them together we're going to get 6. The next time through sum is 6, item is 4, add them together we're going to get 10. And as we repeat that process basically what's happening is that we are producing 1 added to 2, added to 3, added to 4, 5, and so on. And we are truly accumulating now as an iteration the sum 
of those first 10 integer values, the sum of the values in that range. And so if I come back over here and execute and then look at the value of sum, it is 55, which is exactly what you would get if you did that addition. So this is a very powerful kind of pattern, and we can do this with addition, we can do this with multiplication, we can have our range values adjust with different kinds of increments, so instead of going by 1, we can go by 2, or we can go by 5. Depending on what we want to accomplish, we can gain a lot of flexibility by having that assignment statement inside of an iteration and having it repeated and therefore modifying the value of that variable over and over and over again.